the prayers of the rosary, there is just a good example of the Babylonian traditional practices that were in Babylon at the Tower of Babel. What we want to do today is try to prove to you that what happened was in Pergamos, in in uh, Asia Minor, it was the capital city of that area. Julius Caesar was a friend of Achaelius, who was the high priest of the Babylonian order. And when Achaelius died, he bequeathed to Caesar his just uh, his empire of the Babylonian traditions. And so, what happened in Pergamos? Achaelius died and gave it to Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar honored one of his gods with a nidal of a wolf with little children suckling the breasts being fed there because Julius Caesar was of the Utriscan order of the Babylonian religion. He brought from Pergamos to Rome these ideas and these practices. I mean, it is very clear to see, and you'll see it in this video. When Julius Caesar took those practices from Pergamos and brought them to Rome, you can read in Revelations chapter 2 that God says, I know where Satan's seat is. Think about that for a minute. It's because Julius Caesar took the mystery religion to the Roman Empire, and under the guise of the Roman Empire, the Romans were practicing these different traditional religious ceremonies. And now, all over the world, in India and China, there are similar practices. So Julius Caesar took it from Pergamos and brought it to Rome. I mean, Rome existed for about 450 years. When all the Caesars finally died, there was chaos in the Roman Empire, and a man named Constantine came to Rome and he overtook the empire at the Battle of the Bolivian Bridge when in a vision he saw a cross saying, In hoc vinci, which meant, in this sign, conquer. Now whether that happened or not, the vision, one thing's true, Constantine did conquer the Roman Empire, and for the first time in 300 years, he gave the Edict of Toleration, which made Christianity a tolerable religion, and all the Christians were allowed to practice faith in Jesus Christ freely. Yes, he did some good, but in time, as you will discover, what happened was Christians started mixing pagan Babylonian traditions with the gospel and the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe, like many scholars today, that the church of Pergamos, now in Rome, has now been scattered throughout all the world under the form of the Roman Catholic Church. And I know that's hard to hear, but I'm going to prove to you that Julius Caesar held the title Pontiff Maximus. That was a title that Attalus of Pergamos got from his predecessors who were themselves high priests of the Babylonian religion. It is not uncommon today for us to find coins of Caesars with the title Pontifex Maximus, just like it is not unlikely for us to see popes and coins of popes with the same title, Supreme Pontiff or Pontifex Maximus. Join us as we endeavor to uh, learn the difference between religion and redemption. The coming of a new religion to a nation is never a sudden revolutionary act. Christianity had been known, of course, in Rome, but the Christians had been regarded as outcasts, mere meat for lions in the Colosseum. They were heretics. They did not worship the emperor. Therefore, they had to be persecuted. But now, the downtrodden religion became the religion of the rulers themselves. Christianity came face to face with the Babylonian paganism in its various forms that had been established in the Roman Empire. The early Christians refused to have anything to do with its customs and belief. Much persecution resulted. Many Christians were falsely accused, thrown to the lions, burnt at the stakes, and in other ways tortured and martyred. Then great changes began to be made. The emperor of 
Rome professed conversion to Christianity. Imperial orders were sent forth throughout the empire that persecution should cease. Bishops were given high honors. The church began to receive worldly recognition and power. But for all of this, a great price had to be paid. Many compromises were made with paganism. Instead of the church being separate from the world, it became part of its world system. The emperor, showing favor, demanded a place of leadership in the church. For in paganism, emperors were believed to be gods. From here on, wholesale mixture of paganism into Christianity were ma being made, especially at Rome. Now it was the Apostle Peter who had said that he did not think highly of the traditions that were handed down to him by his fathers. Now here we see here a 4th century sarcophagus. The subject is Christian, yet the style suggests Roman religious traditions. Now we here at Christian Street Ministries believe that this video will prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that this mixture produced that system which is known today as the Roman Catholic Church. Now I don't doubt that there are many fine, sincere and devout Catholics. It's not my intention to treat lightly or to ridicule anyone whose beliefs we may here disagree with. Instead, we hope that this video would inspire people, regardless of their church affiliations, to forsake Babylonian doctrines and concepts and return to the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Now please, bear with me until the end of the video. Examine the evidence and then decide. Most Catholics know nothing about the doctrines or the history of the church. Try this evidence simply as informative and then decide what you will do with it. Now when raising our children, we get to the point between right and wrong. And in this video, I will get to the point without being offensive. Now one of the most outstanding examples of how Babylonian paganism has continued to our day may be seen in the way the Romish church invented Mary worship to replace the ancient worship of the mother goddess. The story of the mother and child was widely known in the ancient Babylon world and developed into an established worship. Numerous monuments of Babylon show the goddess mother Semiramis and her child Tamaz in her arms. Now, when the people of Babylon were scattered to the various parts of the earth, they carried the worship of the Divine Mother and her child with them. This explains why many nations worship a mother and child in one form or another, centuries before Christ was born. Now, in the various countries where this worship spread, the mother and child were called by different names. For you will recall that the language was confused at Babel. So under the different languages came different names for a form of worship of a mother and child. The book, Japan and Mythology, we find a statue of a mother and child in her arms. Now to the Chinese, the mother goddess was called Shigmu, or Holy Mother, pictured with a child in her arms and rays of glory on her head. To the goddess of India, her aspects, some good, some bad, also portrays a mother goddess with a child in her arms. Now to the ancient Germans, they worshipped the virgin Hertha with a child in her arms. The Scandinavians called her Dysa, also pictured with a child. The Utrichians called her Nutria, and amongst the Drids, the Virgo Patakura was worshipped as the mother of God. Now in India, she was also known as Indrandi, who was also represented with a child in her arms, as shown in this accompanying cut. Now the mother goddess was known as Epaphrodites and Ceres to the Greeks and Nana to the Sumerians. Sumeria is nothing but Babylon. Now she was known as Venus or Fortuna in the olden days of Rome and Jupiter was the child found in her arms. Now for ages, Isis, the great goddess, and her child Iswara have been worshipped in India where temples were erected for worship. Now, the fertility goddess of Jains, an Indian religious sect from the temple north of Bombay, shows the picture of the goddess mother and a divine child, but the mother was also called the mother of all living things, a universal force. Portrayed here is the goddess of Jane with a child in her arms. But regardless of her name, says one writer, she was the wife of Baal, the virgin queen of heaven, who bore fruit, although she never conceived. Now this accompanying illustration shows the mother and child Devaki and Krishna, very familiar today, Hari Krishna. 
Bishu was also known in the India world, also with a child portrayed in her arms. Examine the praying hands on this upcoming picture, a definite symbol that is universal with all different religions. Now when the children of Israel fell into apostasy, they too were defiled with this mother goddess, as we read in Judges 2.13. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Astaroth or Astoreth was the name by which the goddess was known to the children of Israel. Now in Rome she was called Sibyl from Asia Minor and also found with a child in her arms. Now the idea that this Semiramis Nimrod